Section 4.2, implicit differentiation. Implicitly define functions. The graph of the equation x to the third plus y to the third minus 9xy equals zero has a well-defined slope at nearly every point because it is the union of the graphs of the functions. Well, there's three separate functions, which are differentiable except at O and A. Well, let's look at O and A. So here's a graph of the function, and at O and at A, uh, there is not a derivative there. There's not a slope of the tangent line. But how do we find the slope when we cannot conveniently solve the equation to find the functions? The answer is to treat y as a differentiable function of x and differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, using the differentiation rules for sums, products, and quotients, and the chain rule. Then solve for dy dx in terms of x and y together to obtain a formula that calculates the slope at any point x and y on the graph from the values of x and y. The process by which we find dy dx is called implicit differentiation. The phrase derives from the fact that the equation x to the third plus y to the third minus 9xy equals zero defines the function f1, f2, and f3 implicitly. In other words, there's some sort of hidden equation in there that we just can't get at without giving us some explicit formulas to work with. The graph of this function is called a foilium, foilium, although not the graph of a function, it is the union of the graphs of three separate functions. This particular curve dates to Descartes in 1638. Now, it's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. And when you have something that's not a function, it fails the vertical line test, it's a lot harder to take the derivative of. In other words, you can't get y by itself. Like, how would we get y by itself? when there's two separate y's. I mean, we could minus the x to the third over. So we'd have negative x to the third. But uh, you can't divide by y. I mean, we could factor y out here, but that would still leave a y squared minus 9x. This is very difficult, if not impossible, to get y by itself on here. So we could take the derivative with respect to just x and just dealing with x and not y. Differentiation uh, implicitly. Find dy dx if y squared equals x. And we certainly could get y by itself here, and we have plus or minus the square root of x. But the question is, how do we deal with plus or minus? And the answer to that is, we don't deal with plus or minus. We take the derivative of this implicitly. So now, y is equal to some function in x. Uh, we know it's square root of x on this one, but we won't always know what it is. Every time we take the derivative of y now, we write uh, the derivative of what could be the inside function. For example, if we're taking the derivative, if we're taking dy dx, then we'll write 2y times dy dx, in other words, times the derivative of the inside. So 2y represents the derivative of the outside, dy dx represents the inside. This is the chain rule, and this is equal to 1. So the derivative dy dx is equal to 1 over 2y, and of course we divide by 2y on each side. Find the slope of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25 at the point 3, negative 4. We could get y by itself, but again on this one we'd have plus or minus, and a circle is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. As a matter of fact, it's a combination of one function for the top and another one for the bottom of the circle. Let's take the derivative of this equation. First of all, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared is 2y, but there's some function inside here that is a, a function of x. We just don't know what that would be. So we multiply by dy dx. Every time you take the derivative of y, you write dy dx equals the derivative of 25 is 0. The derivative of a constant is always 0. Now we want dy dx all by itself, so we minus 2x from both sides. We have 2y times dy dx equals negative 2x, and then divide by 2y. dy dx equals negative 2x over 2y, so that's negative x over y. The 2's cancel. Now if we want the derivative at the point 3, negative 4, we're going to evaluate this at 3, negative 4. Now, not only are we using the x values, we're also going to use the y values. So we plug x in for x, and we plug y in for y. So the slope at this point is 
3 fourths. And we can look over here at uh, 3 negative 4, and we have a slope of, yeah, oh, yeah, I drew over it. Let's get rid of that. It's like, why is it not touching the circle? Right here, this slope is up 3 and over 4. Solving for dy dx, show that the slope dy dx is defined at every point on the graph of 2y equals x squared plus sine of x. Let's take the derivative of this. We have 2 dy dx. I took the derivative of 2y, which is 2, but then times the derivative of the inside. And then that's equal to 2x plus cosine of y dy dx. Now I want the dy dx's together, so we get the one on the right over to the left by minusing, minusing cosine of y dy dx, and that's equal to 2x. We can factor out a dy dx. That'll be 2 minus cosine of y equal to 2x, and then divide by 2 minus cosine y. dy dx is equal to 2x over... 2 minus cosine y. There's another part of this that says, show that the slope is defined at every point. The only problem would be is if 2 minus cosine of y could be 0. Well, 2 minus cosine of y cannot be 0 because cosine of y is always uh, between negative 1 and 1. So that's why the slope will be defined everywhere, or the derivative will be defined everywhere for this function. Find the tangent normal to the ellipse x squared minus xy plus y squared equals 7 at the point negative 1, 2. Find the tangent and the normal. Well, they already have given us the point. So we have the point negative 1, 2, and now we need the slope of the tangent line. Now look at that equation. There's really no way to get y by itself. So the, the techniques that we know to find the derivative just don't apply to this. We have to find the derivative implicitly. Let's take the derivative of x squared. That's 2x. The derivative of xy, that is two separate functions. So we have first times derivative of the second, which is 1 dy dx plus the second times the derivative of the first. And the derivative of the first would just be 1. Notice how we took the derivative of y right here, so we need to represent the derivative of the inside of that function. Plus 2y dy dx equals 0. Remember, we're taking the derivative of both sides. The derivative of a constant is always 0. Well, we have 2x minus x dy dx minus y plus 2y dy dx equal to 0. So we ran the negative through. Now I need to leave the dy dx's on one side, get everybody else on the other side. We have uh, 2y dy dx minus x dy dx equals... I'll add the y over and subtract the 2x. Let's factor out a dy dx, and we get 2y minus x equals y minus 2x. And finally, the derivative, dy dx, is equal to y minus 2x over 2y minus x. Now, we're evaluating this to find the slope, to find the slope of the tangent line at negative 1, 2. That's equal to 2 minus 2 times negative 1 over 2 times 2 minus negative 1. We get 2 plus 2 over 4 plus 1. Looks like 4 fifths is the slope. So we go up here and we write, well, we found the slope, 4 fifths at this point. Now we got to write the equation of the tangent and the normal. So for the tangent line, it's y minus 2 equals 4 fifths times x plus 1. And for the normal line, we have y minus 2 equals negative 5 fourths times x plus 1.
Example five, finding a second derivative implicitly. Here we're going to find the second derivative of this function. We have 6x squared minus 6y dy dx is equal to 0. Let's minus the 6x squared over. And then divide by negative 6y. That's equal to negative 6x squared over negative 6y, which is equal to x squared over y when we cancel out the negative sixes. Now we want the second derivative. We want d2y over dx2. That's equal to bottom times derivative of the top minus the top times derivative of the bottom. Derivative of the bottom is 1, but then times dy dx, and that's all over y squared. Now we cannot leave this dy dx here because we know what dy dx is. It's x squared over y. So we're going to replace that with x squared over y. This is equal to 2xy minus x squared times x over y all over y squared. And now we have a complex fraction. We can't leave it like that. We need to multiply everything by y and then we'll be done. We have 2x y squared minus x to the third over y to the third. Now we could factor out an x on top, but it doesn't really cancel out with anything on the bottom. So we'll just leave it like it is.